All right. So we talked about Claude Monet and his garden, and we talked about the flowers that we would see in his garden. What we're going to do today is choose a piece of paper. You'll get to pick any color. So we have a variety of different colors. And what I really want you to do is be focusing on how things look and the shapes that you see in the flowers. So I want you to look closely. We're gonna be doing some flower drawings. You might make yours a little bit like a garden with stems. So you might have them growing upward. Or you might like to, we'll see if this pencil shows up. Mm, a little bit. You might like to fill in your picture so much that it just looks like flowers all over the place. So like overlapping flowers, one on top of another. I'm gonna go back to this yellow one. So what we wanna see is looking at the shapes. So what kind of shape do you see right here? Circle. Maybe a circle. Do you see how those flowers kind of start out in the center and the petals spiral around? Kind of like that spiral shape. Again, we kind of see the circle in here and how the petals come out a little bit more. What kind of shape is this? Yeah, we see some triangle shapes in there too. Some flowers even have little, different little shapes on the inside. Now, I'm gonna take a look at one of my other pictures, one of my other papers, and I'm actually going to trace this so that it shows up a little better for you. I'm going to trace it with a marker. So you're actually going to draw with pencil, but I started with uh, kind of with a rose I had here, kind of like this, and I started out with my spiral, and then I started with the little petals around here. So I'd make petal after petal after petal. It's getting bigger. Yeah, just like this one is. It starts out small if we just look at that little part. And then the petals get out bigger and grow out bigger and bigger. And they start to become a little bit more triangular You're good. as they grow out. That's right. And I look closely at what I'm seeing. Now, you might not be able to see it, but I have a different flower here, which I'll look for in just a sec. You can see it already? Nice. Okay, so my flower, I could keep going until it's so big it goes right off the page. That's okay. We like to use those edges. And what I want to see is that you are drawing big. So the next thing, I've got another one here. Um, I've got another one here that's a little bit like this one, which is kind of similar with that rose. But the petals, we're seeing it at a little bit different angle and the petals all grow up. But I want you to look carefully at the flowers that you see in your pictures. Here we go. Look at those beauties. So what kind of shapes do you see in there? Raise your hand. Yeah. Ovals. Um, look at those oval petals. What are some of them doing? Yeah. They're overlapping. So we see one on top of another. What kind of shape do you see here? Circle. Yeah, we see a circle. What do we see inside that circle? Can you look closely? Yeah, little circles that create a texture. So you're going to be doing all this with pencil, but I could put this circle in, and then I could put those little, 
those little texture dots, little circles in to create that texture. I can make it look bumpy on the outsides like that does. So I'm looking closely at this while I draw it. I'm observing it. I want to do those oval petals and I want to make some of them overlapping. So I'm going to do a big oval. Then I'm going to make one behind. Make another one. Now some places if you draw and then you want one to look like it's behind the other one, you just erase part of it. So here, if, if you could see this petal underneath, I would just erase that. I can't do it now because I'm working with a marker. You're just going to draw with pencil, drawing big flowers, drawing big, repeat that with me, drawing big. So these flowers, look at, they're almost bigger than my hand, bigger than my hand. I want big flowers. If you only have three huge flowers, that's okay. But if you have maybe five big flowers, that would be okay. All right, I want to just see drawing really, really big. There are sometimes, I wonder if you can see this. This one is actually done by a first grader. So look at how they were seeing the little, little flowers growing upward. And then this is more of one big flower with the center. So I want to see you just looking closely and trying to draw. Okay, so I have Sabrina's drawing here from first grade. We're working on our Monet flowers. She has some nice big flowers drawn in, but she has all of these gaps that are still um, um, open here. This would not be ready for doing pastel. So what I'm going to do is I'm not drawing on her artwork here, but I'm going to talk about what you can do to fill in the gaps. So I'm coming back to my project and I'm going to draw a flower here. I'm making the, that very basic flower that a lot of kids will actually do. And then I am putting a round petal in between my petals. Just filling in those gaps. And I'm going to add some leaves. But I have a lot of gaps like our friend Sabrina. Sabrina actually has some of the same issues that I have. I have a lot of space kind of going right down here in between. Like a snapshot of a garden. Like I'm looking down in a garden. And all I see is flowers or anything that you would see in a flower garden. Now, one thing I could do is add in the back, I'm drawing kind of, I can add a vine. You could have a beautiful winding vine going behind. See how I'm filling in the gaps? Kind of going behind what I've already drawn. And by drawing it like that, it looks like it's going behind. Look how that kind of just connected. It's really easy. I could actually add more leaves. And I could still, I love what that vine actually does here. So I'm going to go right behind the flower. I'm not drawing through the flower. I'm just kind of pretending like I would be drawing right here. So, oh, it'd pop out right here if I was to continue that, right? It looks like I filled up the space better. I still have room. Oh, 
I have filled up the space and I'm pretty much ready for oil pastels. So I don't really have I don't really have any gaps. So here is our project. And last start period, we started actually coloring with oil pastels. And this is, um, I believe, Kaylin's from another group. And she colored her flowers and her leaves in. And she did a great job avoiding those colors that make your flowers look dead and make your board look dirty. So she avoided black and she avoided brown. And she also sadly lost her details because when you do the oil pastels, you lose some of those really nicely drawn pencil details. Today, our demonstration, we are going to show you how to put those details in. I'm going to show you one more here. This is um, Emma's from another group and she is still coloring. Um, before she adds details, still working on her butterfly and her little creature and, and um, maybe even the, the birds, but doing a beautiful job. So when you first start, if you're still coloring like Emma, um, continue doing your best job of staying in the lines and avoid the brown and black and keep the green only for the leaves and stems and vines. Now here is my board. I started coloring. And I put my green in for my vine. I still have a lot to color, but I, I went ahead and I filled in my rose and I lost all those beautiful petal details. So my job today is to actually take any color. I'm going to pick another color that is gorgeous and beautiful. And I am going to put those lines back in. And oil pastels actually mix almost like paint. When you take an oil pastel over another color, you're going to get some mixing. So this blue is almost turning into a purple. So I can see my lines a little bit where I lost them. And if I can't see them, I just invent new lines. My rose is done. So I I can see everything now and in person, when I show that to you, you're going to really see it too. I want to add some definition, maybe the light green and dark green for the vine. And it is kind of mixing. I love that. It's like a paint stick. And that big, bold, beautiful line really makes that vine look really cool. So after you color, adding some outlining is beautiful. And you know what color actually works really neat? If any color, any color, will white is a magic color. It will make, so if you're using any color to color, your petals and I'm just going to fill in this one petal. I need to do my other petals red there but this one I want you to see what happens. So see that beautiful red? It mix, look at what white does. White makes its own tint of, of the red and it actually it actually makes a light pink. So I'm going to let you work 